In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at uh, standard deviation and Z scores. And in the first example, in this first page, I'm going to show how to calculate standard deviation manually. Uh, I've got a pretty small example here. There's only five data points because this actually can become fairly lengthy and cumbersome if you have a lot of data points. If you have a lot of data points, you're probably going to want to use technology. It'd be a lot simpler to learn how to use a computer application or a, a graphing calculator, for example. And so the first thing you need to do is calculate the mean. X bar here represents the mean. So I would add all these data points up and divide by 5 because there are 5 of them. So the mean is 16. So now the deviation from the mean is the difference each of these is from the mean. So you go 10 minus 16, not 16 minus 10. Uh, the 10 minus 16 is negative 6. That deviation means it's 6 below the mean. So do the same with 14, you get a deviation of negative 2. 15 minus 16 is negative 1. See, 15 is 1 below 16. These ones are going to have positive deviations because they're bigger than the means. 19 minus 16 is 3, and 22 minus 16 is 6. Now what we need to do is, uh, is square all those, the deviation squared. So we're going to square negative 6, negative 2, 4, negative 1 squared is 1. Notice when you square them, of course, they all give you positive values because a negative squared is still a positive. And so uh, that's all the deviations squared. And so now what I need to do is add all those up. So I'm going to add, find the sum of them. So I'm going to add 36, 4, 1, 9, and 36. And so that gives me 86. So the sum of all the deviations squared is 86. Now what I'm going to do, and this is called the variance. And the symbol for the, uh, well, the population variance is sigma squared. That's uh, the lowercase Greek letter sigma. And you take the sum and divide it by how many data points there are to get 17.2. So that's called the variance. The standard deviation is the square root of that. And so we take the square root of 17.2 and get 4.15. This is what the calculation looks like I just did. 86 divided by 5 is a 17.2. That's the variance. And the square root of that gives me the standard deviation. So that's my variance and standard deviation. The standard deviation is what's used as a measure of spread a lot more than the variance. Because the standard deviation would be in the same units as your data. So for example, if these were centimeters, then the standard deviation would be 4.15 centimeters. The variance would actually be centimeters squared because it's the square of the standard deviation. So you'll see standard deviation used a lot more than variance. Variance is kind of an intermediate step to get to the standard deviation. Now, uh, there's a number of computer applications, a lot of technology you can use to calculate standard deviation. Here's an example of one here. This is an application called GeoGebra. And so I, I entered all of these uh, 18 heights of students. And so here's the standard deviation calculations. Now, there's actually two different ones here that I'll talk about uh, starting on the next page. Uh, the sigma and S actually, S stands for a sample, sigma for the population. Uh, this is a screenshot from my uh, graphing calculator uh, to show uh, that to calculate the standard deviation and uh, of the sample and population. Notice these two values, of course, are exactly the same as what's over here, just written in a different order. So you can use a lot of technology to calculate uh, standard deviation and variance as well. And so, flipping over to the next page, the population variance. Now, population it refers to when you know every single data point that could possibly exist for whatever this group of data is. And so the standard deviation, sorry, population variance is the sum of all the, sum of all the uh, differences between the mean and data point squared divided by the number of numbers in the population. In the sample, S stands for sample, it's the same calculation. So in the population, the mean is called mu. In the, in the sample, it's called X bar. And the one difference, now those are just different symbols for the same thing, really. The sample variation, though, isn't divided by the number of numbers in the population, it, or it's divided by the number of numbers minus 1 in the sample. So if there's n numbers in the sample, you divide by n minus 1. And I remember when I was taking a university stats course, asking the prof, well, why do you divide by n minus 1 as opposed to n? Why do you do that? And I remember the prof, I didn't think he gave me a very good answer. He started talking about degrees of freedom and didn't make any sense to me. But the textbook I used actually gave what I found to be a better 
uh, example here, or a bit of reason for this. In the population, there are often outliers. And outliers affect both the mean and the standard deviation. Okay, They make them make it bigger. In a sample, a sample being only part of the population, often won't have outliers in it. And so if there's no outliers to make it bigger, a little bit bigger, then the sample variance will be a bit too small. And so what they do, when you divide by one number smaller than n, you're dividing by a slightly smaller number, which makes that variance and standard deviation also a little bit larger. So it's kind of like a correction factor. The uh, population standard deviation, of course, is just the square root of this calculation. And the same for the sample. If you take the square root of this, you get the sample standard deviation. Now, as I said, it's pretty cumbersome to uh, manually calculate standard deviation. So there are, so there are some shortcuts if, you're not, if you don't have access to, to technology. And, uh, and here's the two shortcuts, depending on whether you do in population or, or sample. And so it's the, you, you uh, square all the data points and add them all up. That's what that Greek letter sigma stands for. This is actually the uppercase counterpart to that symbol. Sigma lowercase, sigma uppercase. So you score all the data points, add them all up, and you subtract from that the number of data points in the population times the mean squared, and divide by the number of data points in the population, and then take the square root of that. Similar for the uh, sample, except, of course, it's n minus 1 you're dividing by. This is still n, though. Uh, to show the same calculation with the, uh, this, this, the same data from the first example, here's my 10, 14, 15, 19, 22. And so the first thing I need to do is find the mean. So 16 comes from, again, adding all the numbers up and divide by 5. <coughs> Excuse me. So next what I need to do, the sum of all the data points squared, I need to square each of these. 15 squared plus 19 squared plus 22 squared and add them all up. I get 1366. So that's going to be the sum of all the data points squared. So in my formula here, 1366 goes here. Uh, there's five data points, so five goes here and here. And the mean was 16, so 16 goes in place of mu. That's going to be 16 squared. And so that's my next calculation here. This calculation, the second one, is just showing what's underneath the root here. So 1366 minus 5 times the 16 squared, and we divide that by 5 to get 17.2. Remember the 17.2. And then we take the square root of that to get the standard deviation. So 4.15, same thing we got in the first page. Uh, just a little uh, different technology. Here's a screenshot from my graphing calculator. There's the 10 to 22. And here's my... Uh, screenshot again showing the stats. Uh, the mean is 16. There's actually the 1366. It actually gives me the sum of all the squares. And uh, there's my 4.15 standard deviation again. Now, standard deviation is a measure of spread. Uh, it tells you the larger the standard deviation, the more spread out the data is. The smaller the standard deviation, the more condensed it is around the mean. The shorter the range of values. And so this, uh, that's what this example is about. Uh, Mary and Bob both pick apples. Uh, their production over a six-hour period is given. So we just have a sample, not the whole population. This probably isn't their entire apple-picking career in six hours. And so we're asked to compare the standard deviations and the box and whisker plots. So uh, I, I did this. I used GeoGebra to type these in. So here's Mary's data right here. And so, uh, and so I'm going to refer to the S because this is probably just a sample here. So her sample standard deviation is about 3.67 approximately. And here's Bob's. Now it's hard to compare the two uh, box and whisker plots because, okay, there's hers, there's his. If you notice, the scales are different. Okay, and I'm going to put them on the same scale on the next page. His standard deviation is quite a bit bigger, a little over 8 and so if we go to the next page, here's their two standard deviations and uh, their box and whisker plots on the same set of axes. And so notice that hers is much shorter. Her standard deviation is a lot smaller. It's less than half of Bob's. So her, she's more consistent. Bob is less consistent or more inconsistent. He can have really low picking times to really high picking times. Okay, maybe he gets lazy, maybe he gets really motivated, it's hard to say, but she is certainly more consistent. Uh, actually, if you, if you look at the data, you can see that. 
34, 41, 40, 38, 38, 45. She's all, except for this 34 here, she's all right around 40 or so. But he's inconsistent. He's got a 51. He's got a 28. I mean, that's almost double that one. So you can see from this graph that he is more inconsistent. So the standard deviation, the larger it is, the more spread out the data is. The smaller it is, the more condensed it is. Now, uh, the other thing in the title here was uh, Z-score. Uh, the population Z-score, and again, same kind of calculation, uh, just different symbols. Uh, mu is the mean for the population, X-bar for a sample. And the S, remember, is the standard deviation for a sample, whereas sigma is the symbol for the standard deviation for a population. So you take the data point and subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation. A Z-score tells how many standard deviations a particular data point is from the mean, above or below it. Okay, so that's what the Z-score tells you. So it's really giving you an idea how far away from the mean that particular data point is, how much it differs from a normal data point. And so last page here, oh, and I forgot my, I, this was my summary about uh, uh, Mary's standard deviation is much smaller than Bob's. Uh, her data is, as I was saying, much less dispersed or spread out than his. So, last example on uh, page six here. Uh, the space between the rear of the front door and the front of the back door and 10 cars are given. I used, I made this example because I actually had this happen to me. I opened my back door one day and it actually caught on the front door and bent the door a little bit. Uh, so, um, hence uh, my interest in this example. So, those are the distances between the two doors, the gap between the front and the back door. You're asked to calculate the mean and standard deviation and then asked what's the z-score of the 4.1, the largest measurement. So, here's my sample standard deviation formula. So, I need to calculate the, uh, the mean and the sum of all the squares. So here's the sum of all the squares. So I'm going to square each of these numbers and add them all up, which gives me 69.62. So that's what that value is going to be, 69.62. I also need the, need the mean. So I'm going to also add all the numbers up and divide by 10, because there are 10 of them, and divide, and divide by 10. So I get 2.52. So that's my mean. And so in the formula, so the 69.62 is this right here, uh, and it's 10 because there's 10 data points here. Uh, 2.52 is going to be squared, and then we're divided by the, because the sample, so the root of, we're dividing by 10 minus 1 or 9. So here's that calculation, and of course I already simplified the denominator, so I'm writing 10 minus 1, I wrote 9. And so the number underneath the root is going to be 0.6795 repeating. And then we need to take the square root of that. So the square root of that is uh, 0.824. So that is the standard deviation. Here's the uh, same thing in my graph and calculator. And of course, it's showing exactly the same thing. 69.62, sum of the squares, the means 2.52. And my uh, sample standard deviation is 0.824. So B asked to uh, find the z-score for the 4.1 measurement. So we would put 4.1 in here in place of x, subtract the mean, the 2.52, and divide by the 0.824 standard deviation we just got. And so that gives a z-score of 1.92. So that means that the 4.1 measurement is almost two standard deviations above the mean, which actually is getting to be quite high. The car manufacturer might have some kind of a uh, quality control here where if it gets to be a certain number of devi standard deviations above the mean or below the mean, they might either reject it or repair it before it goes on the production line or out to sale. So for example, if you take a larger measurement like 5, if it was 5 millimeters and do the z-score calculation, see a 5 would actually be three standard deviations above the mean. It's actually going to be quite far quite out of the normal. Or if we took it so the gap is so small, like my car was really too small, uh, 0.5 millimeters between the front and back doors. I didn't put millimeters up here, but um, we wouldn't uh, be pretty small here. Uh, so we get negative uh, 2.45, which means that one is uh, minus about two and a half, but two and a half standard deviations below the mean. So um, that's uh, 
that's how you can use that formula to calculate uh, standard deviation and then this is the z-squared formula to find the number of standard deviations above or below a mean a particular data point is. And that's the end of the video.